Welcome to my channel, this is Sharon Oyella and today we are crocheting a gift pouch. Now these little gift pouches, they work up pretty fast so you can make one pretty quickly and they make great gift ideas, great last minute gift ideas. I designed them to fit my little bears with their heads sticking out. That's uh, the reason for that size. But you can of course make the bag for any reason at all. You don't need to stick the bear in there, you can stick whatever you want. A little bit of money, maybe some candy, a little gift and close her up and give it as a gift. You could hang it off a gift as well or even hang it off of a Christmas tree. I love these white ones because they look like little snowballs. I love those and these ones look like ornaments that you would hang off of a tree. This is a beginner friendly video. I'm going to take you through every single row of making the pouch. Also how to do the tie, how to decorate the tie. I've also included instructions for this little sliding bobble here. It goes up and down the chain and that was made for that little Winnie the Pooh bear. So you can get creative and use all the colors that you want to use. You don't have to use exactly what I'm using. For these ones here, these white ones, this is Red Heart Comfort Yarn. It's called White and Opal together. It's got a little bit of glitter in there. Really pretty. It reminds me of snow. This one here is Red Heart Super Saver. And then I made a couple of other ones. This one here is uh, Red Heart Comfort Yarn. So it's just a worsted weight yarn. You don't have to use the same brand. But that's what I use. Red Heart Comfort and Red Heart Super Saver. A worsted weight yarn in color of your choice. With the worsted weight yarn, I used a 4mm hook. Again, you can play around with this hook size. You don't have to use the exact same size. But to get the same size pouch that I have, then you want the worsted weight yarn and a 4mm hook. A pair of scissors. I used a blunt end yarn needle. I also used a little bit of tacky glue on the very end of my chain. And that just keeps it from ever fraying or coming loose. Any white clear drying glue will work. I also use these little jingle bells. I found these in the dollar store. There was nine of them attached to this little card here for $1.50. Now you can get cheaper bells than that, but I chose these because of the loop on the top. I could get my yarn needle through there. So when you find some decorations for yours, just keep in mind that you have to attach them uh, to the chain, so you want something that's a little bit easier to do that with. And just like all my videos here on YouTube, there's always a free written pattern. And that link is popping up here in the iCard. You don't need to click that right now. Once you get to the written pattern, you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom of the pattern and look for the green print friendly. It doesn't show up here on the pages, but it's on my blog. There's a green print friendly button. You can just click that. And in the written pattern, I give you the supplies list. I also give you the link to the bears. I uh, give you the abbreviation chart. I tell you how to read the rows. That's very important. And then, of course, the pattern for the pouch. So if you don't need video help, then you can certainly just use the written pattern. I would suggest printing this off and following along, even if you are going to use this video to get your pouch made, because it will help you understand my patterns a little bit better. All right, my friends, we're going to get started. We start at the bottom of the pouch, we work our way up, and we begin with row one. It's a loop with six half double crochets. Row one is a loop with six half double crochet stitches. I'm going to take my yarn, I'm going to pull it over my hand, and I'm going to wrap the shorter yarn tail around these two fingers twice. Once, twice, and then hold the shorter yarn tail between my pinky and my thumb, and the working yarn in between my pinky and my thumb. I'm making my slip knot. So I'm going to insert my hook, and I'm going to go to the back, grab this yarn here, and pull it through underneath those two strings. Now I have a loop on my hook. I'm going to grab that yarn one more time and pull it through the loop on my hook. My slip knot has been made so I can take it off my fingers and get ready to crochet on. Now we're going to put six half double crochets into this circle. To do a half double crochet you need to yarn over the hook before going into that circle. So yarn over, go into the circle, grab the yarn and pull it through the circle. Now we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. And there was our first half double crochet. Yarn over, go through the circle, grab the yarn, pull it through the circle. We have three loops. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. That was our second. We're going to repeat that four more times. There we go, we have six half double crochets into our ring and now they're called stitches and you can see the V's of each stitch going down. 
one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we're going to close up the ring. I need to pull that starting yarn tail out from in between those strings so it doesn't get tangled up and just leave it hanging like that. Now I'm going to grab that slip knot that I first made with my finger and my thumb and I'm going to pull up one of these two strings from my finger and my thumb. Oh, I got lucky the first time. I'm pulling up and that's closing the ring. Now I need to get rid of this loop so I'm going to pull on that starting yarn tail and my loop has been closed. So let's take a look at our stitches. Pull up your last one so you don't lose it. And just leave it hanging. And one of the stitches is underneath this big loop. You can see it here. It looks like a V. And there will be six of those going around. Last one is in front of the starting yarn tail. Right here. Each stitch has two loops in it. So when you go through, make sure you're going through both loops of that stitch every time you go through a stitch. And you'll be going underneath those two loops just like so. So we have six stitches going around. So now we're going to put two half double crochets in each one of those six stitches and we're going to crochet around the starting yarn tail to get rid of it. So to do a half double crochet, remember yarn over and then go through your stitch. To get rid of this yarn tail, we're going to hold it over our hook and crochet around it. Pull the yarn through and I have three loops. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. That was my first half double crochet. I'm going to do that again. Yarn over, going through, making sure that starting yarn tail is over my hook. Pull the yarn through, three loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that was two half double crochets into the first stitch. Now I'm going to get into the second one. Yarn over, go through, hold the starting yarn tail over, and crochet around it. There's my first, and I'm going to do my second one into the same stitch. And there's two. Going into the third one now. There's one, going back into the third, and there's two. Into the fourth one. One and two. Into the fifth. One and two. And last one of this row into that sixth stitch. Two half double crochets. And that's the end of row two. And now we have 12 stitches around. We're going to cut free from that starting yarn tail now. Making sure not to cut any of our working yarn. And now I'm going to add a marker. I use a piece of yarn of a different color. Just remember if you use the same thing as a stitch marker, this can get pulled out along the way. I'm going to go into that last stitch that I just put in. I'm going to pull the yarn through. And leave one yarn tail hanging on either side. And I'm going to move this marker at the end of every row. So we just marked off the last stitch of row two. Row three is a repeat of the last row. We're going to put two half double crochets in each one of those 12 stitches. And you can straighten this out if it's all wonky looking. Get a little easier to crochet in there. And then you can do a stitch count. Make sure you have 12 going around. And now we're going to put two half double crochets in each one of those 12 stitches. There's one and two. And when you go through a stitch, make sure that you're going through underneath those two loops. Don't go any lower, otherwise you're going to get a hole in your work. So you're yarning over and going through those two loops of your stitch every time. So just watch where your hook is going. When you land on the marker, you should be putting in two half double crochets. Coming to the end of the row, and my last two half double crochets is going to land on that marker, so I'll pull it out and put my two half double crochets into that last stitch. And that's the end of row three and now we have 24 stitches around. Remove that marker. And I'm going to show you the written pattern. We finished rows one, two, and three and now we have 24 stitches around. 
row four, one half double crochet in the next three stitches, then two half double crochets into the next stitch. Then you're going to repeat that sequence, one in the next three and two into the fourth. You keep repeating all around until you land on the marker. When you land on the marker, you'll have 30 stitches around. Row five is almost the same, except for this number is different. So row four, one half double crochet in the next three stitches. Remember to yarn over one, one into the second, one into the third, and now two half double crochets into the fourth. And now repeat that, one half double crochet in the next three, and then two into the fourth. Just coming to the end of the row, one half double crochet in the next three, Is going to land on that marker, I'll pull it out, and put my two half double crochets. And that's the end of row four. Now we have 30 stitches around, and you can see the piece is starting to fold up on itself. You want to make sure that you're working the right side. This is the right side, that's the wrong side. So that's going to be the inside of the pouch, and this is going to be the outside of the pouch. So turn it right side, move your marker. Now we put one half double crochet in the next four stitches and then two half double crochets into that fifth stitch and then repeat all the way around. When you land on the marker you should be putting in two half double crochets. So you can pause the video now and we'll meet back here when we land on the marker. I just finished row five and now I have 36 stitches around. Row six through eight is one half double crochet in each one of those 36 stitches for three rows. So you're going to be moving this marker three times. One half double crochet in each one. You can pause the video now and we'll meet back here at the end of row eight. Remember you're doing three rows of half double crochet. And at the end of row eight we're going to meet back here and I'm going to show you how to count the rows in case you've lost track. Welcome back, we're all finished row eight. And I'm going to show you how to count the rows. We're going to count behind the marker, so on this side. And we start down here, this is row one. And we just count the rings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We're at the end of row eight. So we're moving on to row nine and we're going to decrease the round. We're going to bring this row from 36 stitches down to 30. And we do that by crocheting stitches together. And row 9 is one half double crochet in the next four stitches. And then we're going to crochet two stitches together. And we're going to repeat all the way around. When we land on the marker we'll be crocheting two stitches together. So yarn over, one half double crochet in the next four. And now crocheting the next two stitches together, yarn over, go through, pull the yarn through. Leave those loops on your hook, yarn over, and go into the next stitch, pull the yarn through. Now we have five loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all five loops. And we just turn two stitches into one. Now we're going to repeat that, one half double crochet in the next four stitches. And now crochet the next two together, yarn over, leave those loops on your hook, yarn over, yarn over and pull through all five loops. Now we're just going to keep repeating that to the end. Coming to the end, one half double crochet in the next four. Now we're going to crochet those last two together, and one's going to land on that marker, so I'll pull it out. And that's the end of row nine, and now we have 30 stitches around. Move our marker, and that's the only time we have to decrease. Rows 10 through 12 is one half double crochet in each one of those 30 stitches for three rows. So again, you're going to be moving this marker three times. You can pause the video now. We'll meet back here at the end of row 12. I just got to the end of row 12. And now we're going to slip stitch to the next stitch. Don't yarn over, just go through the next one. Grab your yarn, pull it through. Instead of yarning over, just pull the first loop through the second loop. And there was our slip stitch. 
Now, there are two different ways that you can finish this. You can finish the top with color. This is my little honey pot for my Pooh Bear. It looks like a little bit of honey there. Or you can just leave it all one color. So I'm going to show you how to do one color first, and then we're going to back up, and I'm going to show you how to change colors and give the top of the pouch a different color. So now we're doing the final row. We're going to chain three. So yarn over and pull through three times. One, two, three. And now single crochet into the second stitch from the start of the chain. One, two. Single crochet into there. Chain three. One, two, three. And then single crochet into the second stitch from the start of the chain. One, two. Chain three. And then single crochet into the second stitch and you keep repeating all the way around until you got right back to where you started and then you'd slip stitch into that final stitch. If you want to change color, let's do that together. So if you're changing colors, you're not slip stitching yet. You've just finished off your last stitch of the row and that was a half double crochet. Now we're going to slip stitch into the next one but we're going to bring in our other color first. So I'm going to go into the next stitch for a slip stitch and I'm just going to leave my hook there and I'm going to hold the working yarn back here with my finger so it doesn't pull through. Bring in the color change and hold it underneath the same finger. Get ready to crochet on. Now I can switch fingers. I'm going to pull the new color through that stitch and then immediately through the loop on my hook. And now I'm going to bring up this yarn tail here and I'm going to hold it along the edge. I'm going to slip stitch again, but I'm going to slip stitch around this yarn tail just to kind of lock it in place. So I'm going to go through the next stitch, grab the yarn, pull it through. Instead of yarning over, just pull the first loop through the second. There, I can let go of these now and break free from the green color. I don't need that anymore. Okay, so now I'm just going to do the exact same thing I do for the one color. I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. And I'm going to single crochet into the second stitch from the start of the chain. One, two. And this one I'm just going to hold the starting yarn tail on the edge and I'm going to crochet around it. So going through and crochet around it. I don't need to do that anymore. Now I can cut free from that starting yarn tail. And I'm going to chain three. One, two, three and single crochet into the second stitch from the start of the chain. And I repeat all the way around. I'm coming to the end. You see this green yarn tail? That was the main color we were working in. I want to crochet around that as well. So I have just a few stitches left here. I'm going to chain three. One, two, and three. Then I'm going to single crochet like I normally would into that second stitch from the start of the chain. But I'm going to crochet around this green yarn tail now. And I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. I'm going to slip stitch into that first slip stitch that we made. Hold it over the hook and pull the yarn through and we are done. We're not going to break free yet. We're just going to break free from that green yarn tail so it's out of our way. So what you want to do for your tie is completely up to you. Uh, you can get creative and play around with it. You could break free now, weave in the yarn tail and just make a separate tie and put it in so you'd have two ends of the tie. All of my pouches only have one end. And that's because I crocheted right from here and made my tie. But if I broke free now, weaved in the yarn tail, and then made a separate tie, I would have two ends to tie together. But I'm going to show you how I did mine. So right from here I'm going to chain 45. Yarn over and pull through 45 times. There's my very long chain of 45. Now I'm going to break free. But before we do that, let's decide how we want the end of the chain to look. Now I've included instructions for our little bobble and that can be slid up and down the chain. 
Now you don't have to do that. I just thought it was just a little added detail. It's not even necessary. Or you can just finish off the chain and have nothing at the end. And this chain, I'm going to show you how to make a little loop on the end. Okay, so it's up to you. If you want to do that bobble, like on this one here, you're going to need a little bit of extra yarn. So when you finish off, just pull out some extra yarn. It'll give yourself a lot to work with there. It's always nicer to work with something that's too long than too short, that's for sure. Okay, now I'm just going to bring all of that yarn through this loop, and then I'll pull it tight. So if you weren't making a bobble on the end, this would go a lot faster, but we're going to weave the chain now in and out of these loops here. So if we've given ourselves a lot of yarn, this is going to take a little bit longer, but that's okay. We'll get there. And now you just go through, bring your yarn needle in and out of these loops, in and out. And then pull your yarn through. Keep going all the way around to where you started. So I've just made it around to where I started. So this is the start of my chain here. I actually want to come out of that same loop that I first went into. So it kind of doubles over there. Okay, so if you're not making a bobble, you can definitely fast forward this part. You don't need to watch this part. But if you're making a bobble, insert your hook through the end of that chain. I'm going to pull the yarn through and chain one. And now I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to go through that chain that we first went into. So skipping that chain that we just made and going into that chain that we went into, pull the yarn through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through the first two. And now you have two loops on your hook. Leave those there, yarn over, go back into that chain that we were working in, pull the yarn through. You have four loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through the first two only. And now you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, back into that chain we we're working in, pull the yarn through. Now you have five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through the first two only. And now you have four loops on your hook. We're going to do this one more time. Yarn over, pull the yarn through, yarn over, pull through the first two loops only. And now you have five loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all five loops. And now you can finish off. Leave a tail for sewing. Pull the yarn tail through that loop and pull it tight. And there we've made a little bobble. Now we're going to sew that bobble down, but we're going to do it around the chain. Now we're going to place this on our chain. It looks like a snake head. And that yarn tail, wrap it around the chain and go into bobble. So now you can close up your pouch and you want to make sure that you're not sewing into that one chain, otherwise it won't slide. I'm just going to wrap over this chain and through the bobble on both ends of the bobble. And pull it through and I could even do that one more time. Wrapping over the chains through both ends of the bobble. Make sure it can still slide. And now I'm just going to knot this yarn tail off. I'll just knot it off right here. I'm knotting off on the end of the bobble. Before pulling that all the way, I'm going to go through that loop and pull tight. Now I didn't go into the chain, it was into the bobble. Now I'm just going to weave this in. I can bring it into the bobble, I guess. Bring it through the bobble and then we can cut free. And there we have a little adjustable thing on our chain. I don't know how important that is, but <laughs> a little added detail anyway. So there we go. So I noticed when I was working here that my one of my yarn tails did come loose. So what I'm going to do to fix that, let's do it together. I want to knot this one more time in here. So it's way too short to work with. So I'm going to push my needle through there at the back end. And then I'm going to thread this through the end. There, it's threaded now. Now I could pull it through. 
There, it's wrapped around one more time. And I'm going to use a little bit of tacky glue. And I'm just putting it right on the knot itself and on that yarn tail. I'm going to cut this yarn tail free once this glue is dry. So I'm just going to set this down and let this dry completely before I play around with it. It's a clear gel tacky glue. I've also used tacky glue that's white because it dries clear. Uh, just make sure that you have a clear drying glue before you put it on your yarn. So depending on how you want to finish off the other ones, open up your pouch all the way so you know how much chain you have to work with. And I'm going to add a little bell and thankfully this one comes with a loop big enough for my yarn needle so I can just pull it through. That's all I did for that and then you just loop the other end of the chain up to wherever you want it to go. I usually go as far as I can at the stop of the pouch there and now I just sew through the chain. I'll just add a couple of stitches through. I'm going right through the chain itself both chains, both sides I should say. Bring it through. Okay, and before pulling it all the way I'm just going to go through that loop and pull tight. And pull very tight. And that's done. Now I can just bring this yarn tail through the knot and then cut it free. And what I'm going to do is add a little tacky glue on the end of this one as well. Just to make sure it never comes loose. Add a little tacky glue on the end, rub it in, and then set it aside until it's completely dry. Alright my friends, that brings us to the end of this video tutorial. If you found it helpful and you got yourself a little pouch made, please give the video a thumbs up. I sure would appreciate that. I'd also love to see pictures of what you've made. You can tag me on Instagram or post them on my Facebook page, Emma Grimmie Freely. Both of those links are in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you super soon.